I want to thank everyone for joining us today. This is the Southland uh, Power and Nature Regional Coalition meeting, and we meet once a month. And today we have with us Erin Wilson. Um, I'll give just a little bit of a background on her and then what we're going to talk about. And let's see. Closed captioning. All right, we've got closed captioning going now. So Erin works with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. She's a regional manager for the South Coast region. Um, and that includes five coastal counties, Santa Barbara, Ventura, Los Angeles, Orange, and San Diego. And she graduated from Cal State University Pomona, Pomona with a BS in zoology and a minor in botany. And she studied field biology that emphasized native birds, reptiles, amphibians, and mammals of Southern California. So she's got a lot of great local experience. And she started her career at CDFW as a scientific aide for Region 5. And that was 20 something years ago. So oh. she's been with the department for a while. Um, and no, she don't say that. <laughs> okay. She's been with the department just a short time, um, just a blip. And she was doing uh, recreational fish surveys and then commenting on CEQA documents for San Diego and Orange County. Erin and I go way back because we worked together on a mitigation program here in Orange County. But uh, she has, I'm going to read her last sentence of her bio, which is pretty cool. When she's not working, she loves to accompany her son Reed to his disc golf tournaments all over California. Um, and really enjoys it when it's in wine country. But she also has, a, I'm going to call it a zoo of pets at her house. <laughs> um, do you want to list off your 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 friends that are at home? Well, right now I have, well, I got rid of the chickens, so they're gone. But I have um, two dogs and a guinea pig. And, and I just got rid of a fish and I have a horse. <laughs> so clearly you like animals. Yeah. Fantastic. So Erin has an extensive background. We're really excited that she's here with us today. This presentation actually comes to us because at the beginning of the year and even late last year, we talked about the types of things we might be interested in learning about and having a conversation with somebody who had knowledge on cow fish and wildlife would be fantastic. And so those topics are what we're going to cover. So the first one is kind of how the de department prioritizes land, how um, evaluations occur for landscapes that have been impacted by things like wildfowl, wild, I'm in trouble talking, maybe this eclipse thing is getting to me. Um, <laughs> things that, impacts that have happened to the land like wildfire and grazing, and then how the department relays priorities to the funding agencies that it works with, not only in Sacramento, like the you know headquarters for CDFW, but the Wildlife Conservation Board. So that's kind of the intro to the conversation that we're gonna have. Do you wanna add anything to that at the moment, Erin? I think that's a good, that's a really good start. start. Okay, so this is going to be more of a conversation style, but I'm going to share the screen a couple of times, and I'll start, Erin, with our, our regions so that you can give us an overview of how the regions are set up and what we need yeah. to know about that. Yeah, so um, thanks for inviting me here. It's good to see some of you guys. I know some of you guys, and um, I appreciate your efforts in conservation throughout the state, but mm -hmm. this is going to focus on Region 5. So region five is the um, the coastal, the five coastal counties. So Santa Barbara to San Diego. So I know that a lot of your questions had to do with um, region six. Um, so if, if you need a contact for region, oops, sorry, there's my menagerie. If you need a contact for region six, just let me know. Um, I can help you out there. Um, we do have some projects that kind of straddle the border. So we coordinate all the time on that. Um, so, um, I think most of my conversations here will, well, obviously they will change to region five, but mostly the process. So that'll probably help you a little bit too. Um, so did you want me to talk about um, how the region kind of functions in our land acquisition process? Yeah, First, anything you wanna okay. talk about on this page or I can stop sharing and then we do the- Oh, big... you can stop sharing that. Okay. So um, I think that, does that, okay, never mind. <laughs> um, so, the way our region functions is um, we used to have uh, what we call the land acquisition review committee. 
And um, and so that that included all of the um, supervisors and EPMs of all the programs. And um, we would meet and vote on certain properties that were um, either proposed as an individual property or as a whole, which used to be called CAPS. And I forget what they, um, uh, conceptual, conceptual area, area protection, plan. protection plan. Yeah. I always forget what that extra P is. Um, and so what we would have were, are these documents that were sort of secret documents that included a whole bunch of properties that um, really laid out a conservation strategy for certain areas. And um, and then you had land acquisition, land acquisition evaluation, LAEs. I, I don't know what the, I can't remember the E. Um, evaluation. Then, but yeah, sorry. I got so, um, Land acquisition evaluation forms that had to be uh, reviewed by the committee. And then um, once the committee of supervisors and EPMs approved those documents um, and they went through the process of being improved, it was a really kind of arduous process and time consuming, then you could proceed to seek funding for those properties. So when WCB turned into a more, um, uh, what do they call that? Um, process of submitting applications where it's, it's continuous filing versus oh, right. they used to have rolling like deadline. a rolling deadline instead of call outs for certain funding. Um, they got rid of all of that. So <laughs> I'm going to tell you Pyrenees like to work. Um, okay. Hold on. Hi. Oh, you I'm back. Sorry about that. Send that one outside. Um, so so right now, since WCB is continuously filing, um, the department is kind of just they the region is kind of just doing these ad hoc meetings to discuss certain projects that we're looking at trying to um seek funding for. So, um, but how, how the department, how we, how this, I'm sorry, how the, how the region kind of prioritizes its um, properties is that we have all of the data layers of um, already preserved areas. We have, um, what else? Uh, we, we have um, the data layers of species issues and, and sensitive species in the region. And so um, when we receive a property or say somebody like one of your organizations submits an application to or um, reaches out to the department, we just discuss that and look at all of the um, maps and layers of data that we have and, and determine whether that kind of is is high, medium or low priority. So um, I, know, I know it's really confusing and we still are trying to work through this process new, but um, it helps when um, you guys have a property that you're looking to acquire or trying to find funding to reach out to the department, um, the regional staff that you um, reach out to them as well as reaching out to WCB or to CDFW, our grants program. So we have, um, the department has a watershed restoration grants program that has their own funding for certain things like 30 by 30 and um, NCCPs. But then we also have WCB who has uh, big tranches of funding for other bonds and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> um, it helps when you reach out to us so that we know what properties you have and what you're looking for to prioritize so that we can feedback to them what um, regions priori priorities are. And then um, WCB and the Watershed Restoration Grants Program collaborate together to decide what funding opportunities there are and what they think is appropriate to fund. So um, I know that was really confusing and probably not very helpful, but um, I guess the bottom line is, is that if you have properties that you're looking to find funding for, it's um, pretty helpful to reach out to the region to determine um, where um, where our priorities are and to kind of um, allow us to evaluate the property so that we can um, put it on our list of priorities so that we can coordinate with WCB and CDFW to, to um, put that on their list and their radar too if they don't have it. I don't know if that's, that was probably really confusing yeah. I'm sorry well it, it's technical so let me let me <laughs> back up and ask confusing. a question on that yeah. so 
the process of doing the conceptual area protection plan, the cap, is no longer needed. Is there right. a benefit to having your property in a cap or is that entire process eliminated from Fish and Wildlife's, you know, list? Um, of we, still, we still look at caps. So if you have a property that's in a cap, it's really, it's really good to mention it because we okay. don't have to go through that approval process, but we say, oh, hey, this is in the cap. That, that makes sense. So if mm -hmm. a property isn't in a cap, let's say there's a geography that doesn't have one um, and that, you know, the, the organization that's interested in getting land acquired, can they still create one with the department? I don't think it would. I think it would be more, waste, more of a waste of time than because okay. we want the information that's in the cap, but not the actual cap. Okay. So if you have a cap, you're already in it. If you don't, there's no need to create a new one. Yeah. And okay. I would say, I would say to put it in more of a format of the land acquisition. Evaluation. Evaluation. Sorry, evaluation form, just because we're really just looking for that uh, one to two page big hit of the property. Like, what are the species? What's the recreation? What's the connectivity? Um, you know, what are the species? Are there any um, disadvantaged community bonus points that you get? Um, mm -hmm. Is there tribal issues? Those kinds of things. Okay. All right. So um, mention it in an application, whether it's the application goes to Cal Fish and Wildlife or WCB. Um, mm -hmm. Sounds like there are bonus points if it's already in one because a lot of homework mm -hmm. has been done. Um, yep. If somebody's outside your region, do they they contact anyone in particular? Like, is there an acquisition specialist on the team that they need to reach out to? So, um, sorry. Yes. So we are in the process of backfilling that position. So we have a LARC uh, land acquisition committee specialist in region. So oh. I should have that information to you maybe in the next week to share. Okay. And that's just for region five. So that's region, for region six, five. for example, would potentially already have somebody in that position. Yep. Okay. I, I'm not so, sure if they have a position identified specific to land acquisition. Okay. Okay. I can reach out to Heidi and, and ask her and see if there's a certain person that's the best contact. Mm, perfect. And I can include those in our minutes then to send along to everybody else. Great. Um, let's move over to impacted lands. I know one of the biggest concerns that's rippled through different regions is when a wildfire happens, for example, and the habitat and the species are gone. Do you, as an evaluator of the, the worthiness of, of funding a grant, think, oh gosh, the habitat's gone, we're not interested anymore? What's what's your feel on those impacted areas? We've I've, we've never looked at a property that had just burned and said that it wasn't suitable, it wasn't a suitable acquisition anymore, just because it burned. So um we don't look at it that way. Um I think we would look at what the habitat was before. And the species and what um what the likelihood of it recovering is. You know, sometimes when you get something that um that was so um disturbed that it's not likely to come back. I, I don't I don't know that we would ever say no just because it burned though. We would just take that into consideration and and think about how it would be managed and what their the funding opportunities are to um rehabilitate the land. Okay. And the same thing with lands that have been grazed previously. How does the department look at those? Oh, I, I, we've purchased so many lands that have been grazed previously. That's not even a question. Um, we, I mean, we also have grazing leases in our own lands, like Hummel. We have a grazing lease that um, grazes certain cattle for certain areas so that we can um, provide suitable habitat for burning owl. So uh, it's not a non, um, it's not a prohibited use and it's not, um, something that we um, don't think about. We do a lot of um, grazing lease, um, not grazing leases, but conservation easements up in Santa Barbara County that include mm -hmm. grazing for CTS. So um, it's one of the tools in the toolbox, actually. And you said CTF. What is oh, that? California tiger salamander. Sorry. Oh. All right. Um, how are lands that 
don't have endangered species on them looked at. I mean, a lot of the times you don't necessarily know what's on a property because you haven't done a biological sure. assessment because those cost a lot of money. Yep. We don't require biological assessments like that. Um, you know, focus surveys to be done before an acquisition is considered and sometimes they're never done. Um, it's it's mostly like we know kind of where some where the endangered species generally are. So we consider it that way. But um, this, a land doesn't have to have um, listed species on it to be protected. Um, there's so much, um, so many pocket, pocket um, so many buckets of money for watershed protection, for um, for just um, uh, non-species related stuff. Um, if you have species issues, you can always, th there's focused pots of money for that. So a lot of the, um, like section six funding, you know, um, for acquisition, we can um, use section six grants for endangered species to um, use as a match for say WCB funding or CDFW funding. But um, yeah, you don't generally have to have a listed species to be a uh, priority for acquisition. Okay. And since we're talking about listed species, there's a lot. Recently, I was working on something, I think it was last week, and we had to list out some species that were being petitioned for listing. And so are those ranked any differently than ones that are already on the list? You mean uh, listing for the service or the department? Uh, for the department. Okay. They're either on, so... Um candidate species or just they're being petitioned right now yeah so it like we could use the mountain lion or the joshua tree okay. as an example or steelhead <laughs> or steelhead yep i mean it, it, like i said you don't have to actually be listed to be a priority so if something's in the process to be listed we would prioritize that property um pretty high if we knew that it was going to be um protected so for example we just did an acquisition in ventura for for um for steelhead habitat specific to and it, I think the listing was or potential listing was um was in the evaluation um which I guess will be in a couple of days won't it listing quote I think so so anything else that is helpful for those completing applications to either to the, the department or WCB in terms of these types of things really help your application mm -hmm. um, be successful. Sounds like the first thing was have a conversation with yeah. the regional staff. What else do people need to think about? Um, I think um, it's good to to look at connectivity. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of um, issues with um, socioeconomic or disadvantaged communities and bringing open space and and um, green to people who don't have green around them, um, which is its own certain pot of money and it doesn't mean that it would be prioritized over a, a species but there's still a, like a pot of money for for recreational and um non-species conservation um what else would uh tribal issues if you have land that um that um has has um native american interest so tribal issue tribal in interest in either owning the land or managing the land or co-managing the land. Those things are pretty high right now in the in the governor's um, office kind of priority. So um, I know we have a couple of projects where we're looking at co-management with the local tribes or just getting that tribal engagement to manage the land. So mm -hmm. that's a, another um, bonus. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's helpful to understand that at the regional level, we don't talk about funding pots unless it's um, like we're saying, maybe you should apply for a section six grant or something because those funding agencies generally um, have their own ideas. So you don't have to worry about generally like I'm applying for a prop 50 grant or I'm gonna look for the, um, I'm coming, I can't only think of like the old ones, prop 84. 84. Um, yeah, just, it, it's so like, um, that's what they do. They try and figure out how to, if something is truly a priority, they find funding for it in whatever okay. possible works for them. So the, the WCB staff or CDFW mm -hmm. staff would match the application if it was a priority yeah. to the funding sources that were available. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also probably important to note that it's not like we have a list of a hundred properties and they're all listed from one to 100 and they're all like, we have to do one first or two first. If you have a property that is ready to go and shovel ready or money ready or ready to purchase that, um, that could just float to the top because it's, it's an easy picking and they have a pot of money that they need to use. So um, sometimes you'll see things that you didn't exactly think was a higher priority, but that's why it was ready. And I think that there are entities out there that have kind of figured out that process. Okay. And, <laughs> you know and that I mean? leads me to, because you kind of said, all right, if we've got, you know, property number one, all the way to property number 100, if property 125 was purchased and that provides some type of strategic connection somewhere, does that reorder the list somehow for the department in terms of um, the priorities? Like if, if you get information that something else has been acquired, do you juggle your list somehow to reprioritize? Period. Was, I'm sorry, was that a question? Yeah. Do you do you reprioritize? Yeah. Do you reprioritize your list when you get new information? No, because we generally like list it as like high, medium, or low. Okay. So it's not like it's not like we like shuffle it around much. But you know, there's always that one property that comes up that is like you've been trying to get for ages, and you're just like that floats to the top, and you're like you know everyone rushes to the door to to get that one funded. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, it's it's kind of like um it's it's kind of like the Randall Preserve. Everybody wanted that funded. So everybody figured out how to make it done. Um, or there's always that property that just comes up that I don't know, some somebody in the government wanted it funded and so we're funding it. Um, and so region doesn't have much of a say. So it's a lot of um it's it's a mixed bag, but like I said, if you have something ready to go, don't dismiss it because it doesn't have like 10 listed species on it. If it, especially if it's connectivity, connectivity is really huge right now. We have, um, we have a lot of positions that were funded throughout the state that were for wildlife connectivity. So, um, that's a huge new thing. Yeah. I'm curious. Um, the first thing that popped into my head when you were talking about this, and this will be my last question before we move into the questions that folks submitted, you know, the, the Wallace Annenberg crossing or Liberty Canyon was prioritized, got private and public funding for it. Um, are there relationships that are ongoing with Caltrans in terms of how to retroactively fix some of our roadways for connectivity? I think I, I'm going to say yes, because I know that they have a pretty significant advanced mitigation and wildlife crossing um, team that are like meeting to talk about these things. I'm just not sure how well it's formed yet, but okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how far that's going to get. I, I'm just not, I, I feel like that's something that, that they're trying to address. Like we have a list of prior, priority um, uh, wildlife corridors that need to be fixed over roads and stuff, but I'm not sure if, um, if they're like planning to fund those yet or I don't think that it's it's been developed quite enough to see where that's going. Okay. But there's definitely a priority list for okay. uh, overcrossings and, and stuff, but I'm not sure where it's at. Okay. Uh, and that would be a conversation with Caltrans, right? right? All right. Well, maybe we need to invite them. So we had a lot of questions submitted and we will only have a time for a handful of them. Um, a lot of them related to the San Jacinto wildlife area, and that's outside of your region, Erin, but I think some of the questions we can touch on kind of generically, Pam had submitted a question about an inholding called the Horse Ranch property in the San Jacinto wildlife area, and the note is that it would be a great educational site for CDFW or another nonprofit to acquire. So you may or may not know the horse property, but I think the general question is, is the department interested in sites that have an educational component or could have an educational component? I'm, I'm not sure what the educational. Edu educational. <laughs> and even an education uh, and the educational um, program um, interest on this site is in particular, but we do have um, an education and outreach program 
um, in the region, and I'm sure that um, Region 6 has one too. But um, when we look at acquiring properties and, and, and making them ecological reserves, we do think about that. Like we have Newport Back Bay, which is a huge science and education outreach program for the community. We um, have tens of thousands of disadvantaged community children come to Newport. That's a coordination with um, uh, the County of Orange and the city of Newport to um, educate them on, uh, on the Bay. So um, we do look at those kinds of opportunities um most of our some of our ecological reserves have interpretive centers and and um mm -hmm. and stuff like that to educate the community so i would say yes i just um for me as a horse person that sounds really fun um but uh i'm not sure about that area that okay part. um emily had a question uh and this i think ties into the comments you had earlier about coordinating with tribes um, yes. specifically is uh how does the opportunity for cultural burning kind of tie into things? Uh, I mean, it's depending on um, if it's an already acquired property or if it's a newly acquired property, we would just look at um, what um, the, tr the tribal requests are and um, try and incorporate them into the acquisition. We're pretty flexible with the tribe because generally they're gentle on the resources. So um, we try to, um, we, we generally try to make things work for them if they're part of the acquisition. Okay, excellent. Shay had um, quite a few questions, and I think we've got one uh, specifically related to NCCP or HCP areas, which are mm -hmm. conservation plans. So the question is specifically, what gaps in the land acquisition would fish and wildlife like to be conserved specifically in the Orange oh. County Conservation Plan area? Um, I'm not completely familiar with the exact gaps in the OCH and CCP HCP. Um, uh, but uh, definitely if these um, lands have uh, the listed species that are included in the, um, or covered species, I should say, in the NCCPs, then they would provide some good opportunities. Or if they're connected to already preserved lands for the NCCP, those would be a priority. So um, I generally saw a map a few weeks ago on some of the properties that are available and there seemed like there were some so i'm not sure which ones you're specifically looking for but if you have something that biologically makes sense and it um, fits into the nccp covered species list and resource resources then um, we would probably be interested okay great uh david had a question and this again is pretty specific but maybe we kind of generalize Will CDFW help acquire or facilitate conservation easements on agri agricultural lands adjacent to the San Jacinto wildlife area that are essential to the existence of the tricolored blackbirds in Riverside County? So conservation easements and tricolored blackbirds. So um, this is a really good one. Um, I'm not sure if we have had a conservation easement yet for, for ag for tricolored, but I think that it would be really um, really interesting to do so. And I think we would be interested in that. Um, we do conservation easements in Santa Barbara County for um, for ag use, um, mostly for cattle grazing on lands with California tiger salamander because they tend to keep the the um, the upland habitat nice for um, the CTS and obviously the, um, the cattle need the pond so that those get maintained. So mm -hmm. there's a really good relationship there. Um, I've heard talk about tricolors and, and some sort of way to um, preserve um, habitat through ag, lease, uh, ag leases, um, conservation easements on those lands. Um, if you have something that makes sense, I would I would definitely um, bring it up. Okay. Uh, and that's in region six again, right? The San Jacinto mm -hmm. Wildlife Area. Okay. Um, let's have this be our last question because I'm aware of the time. Maria asks, how can the department fund and record deed restrictions or easements in the San Jacinto Wildlife mm -hmm. Area property to ensure it is perpetually conserved as a wildlife area and global flyway? Which one is that? Uh, which question or which yeah, area? Which question are you reading? Oh, Maria's. Um, oh, I got it. Sorry. Okay. Um, so we wouldn't necessarily want to fund a deed restriction because those are not those don't are not actual real um, interest in the land. So we could um, fund conservation easements, just like I said, we do fund conservation easements in Santa Barbara County, 
and that's generally because in Santa Barbara County, they're, they're, um, they don't want to lose their land. So they want, um, but they want protection on the land. So they want to try and keep their land in the family by putting a conservation easement on it. Um, and those do work. So the, um, perpetual conservation as a wildlife area, um, I'm not really sure, maybe, I'm not sure how this relates to San Jacinto wildlife area though. I don't know if that's already preserved or mm -hmm. can somebody just tell me if, is the San Jacinto wildlife area already conserved? Uh, Maria, I think you're on the line. Do you want to unmute yourself? Yes, uh, hi. Um, I had heard that it's owned by the, and managed by the county, but it doesn't have a long-term or perpetual uh, conservation oh. vehicle on it or document it's not deed oh. restricted it's not it has an easement on it so it's it possible oh sorry can sell it yeah so i think this is a region six question i i'm wondering if the the wildlife area was um part of the county's contribution to the nccp and they didn't record an easement or deed restriction and um and honestly in most nccps um there's not a requirement to record an easement by the um, participating and by the participating jurisdictions, which you know can cause issues later on. Um, but I, I would say that now it's become a um, a requirement to record easements or some sort of deed restriction on lands um, so that they do retain that um, perpetual conservation. So okay. I, I kind of see what your question is, and it is an issue. I'm just not sure on that property. Uh, yeah, I appreciate your general answers. I'm not going to hold you to it. Yeah, thank okay. you. <laughs> yeah, general, anything general. I know you're out and you're not in um, Region 6, so I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, it has been a big problem. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, Aaron, um, thank you so much for your time today. I think even though it, it can be complicated, the short version is if you have an acquisition uh, list or even a single acquisition, step number one is reach out to the region, have a conversation, see if it lands somewhere in the priority list. Uh, and then from there, you know, making sure that you're pointing out any particular species that could be preserved, if it's in a cap uh, or has an LAE already existing for the property, all of those things contribute to the success. And uh, you will send me uh, the contact for region six. I don't know. People can drop in the chat if they need contacts for other regions and we can get those out as well. But uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you. And uh, we will end the recording and head into our regular Southland meeting. So okay. folks can leave the meeting if they're not in the Southland and we'll call this presentation a wrap. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Melanie.